Tonight, the P&ID contract is come as fail again as the UK court validates Nigeria's claim for post-judgment costs to be paid in pound sterling. Governor's Forum accepts Supreme Court verdict on fiscal autonomy for local government What the local governments have to do is to manage themselves, especially with the upcoming um, minimum wage, to manage their affairs and make sure um, salaries are paid. Also on the news, the federal government inaugurates Presidential Food Systems Coordination Unit to control food prices. This committee seeks to coordinate all the agricultural acti activities uh, beyond also agricultural, but, uh, but anything to do with food system between the local government states and the federal government. Thank you for joining us on the NCA for the Network News. I am Lahmi Ali. Benny Adams, as usual, has the business bit and Naja Atu is standing by with facts and figures on challenges concerning proliferation of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria. Now, we begin with appointments. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointments of Dr. Abubakar Ansoho as the Managing Director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA. Dr. Ansoho holds a doctorate degree in maritime technology from Liverpool John Moores University, United Kingdom and a master's degree in international transport from Cardiff University of Wales, also in the United Kingdom. He has served in various roles in the Nigerian Ports Authority. The president has also approved the appointment of Senator Adedayo Adeyeye as chairman of the board of the Nigerian Ports Authority. Senator Adeyeye is a seasoned lawyer, journalist, a former minister of state for works and former senator representing Ekiti South Senatorial District. The president expects the new leadership of this pivotal agency to deploy excellence in the discharge of their duties to enable efficient port services and improved industry outcomes. Now, the United Kingdom Court of Appeal has validated Nigeria's claim for post-judgment costs to be paid in pound sterling by P&ID. In a statement issued in Abuja, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi S.A.N., points out that P&ID's legal efforts to ensure Nigeria only recovers its entitled course in Naira, which evidently will produce a much lower cost, has failed. Fagbemi maintains that the development was another misconceived and desperate attempt by fraudsters to deprive the Nigerian people of hard-earned public revenue. The chief law officer of the nation posits that, as a government, the Tinubu administration is determined to recover these costs and make P&ID and its U.S. funders pay for this scam so as to serve as a deterrent to others as he commends the dedication and tenacity of Nigeria's legal team for the achievement. The verdict is the latest victory recorded by Nigeria in its fight against corruption and extortion by litigation hawks. Now, the Nigeria Governors Forum has expressed its acceptance of the Supreme Court verdict, revalidating the autonomy of local government authorities in the country by its verdicts, the Apex Court outlaws the current practice in which the funds due to the local government authorities are being credited to state government accounts. In an interview with State House correspondents after their visit to President Bola Tinubu, Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Kara State, and his colleagues from Bochi and Imo States described the Supreme Court judgment as a welcome development. Welcome the ruling of the Supreme Court. Compliance is a given. And um, our Attorney Generals have applied for the enrollment order, which we'll study carefully. But by and large, um, governors are happy with the devolution of power in respect to um, local government autonomy. The Governor's Forum equally expresses belief that the verdict will reduce the burden of the state government. Uh, people really don't know 
how much states expense in building out local governments and um, that's the issue there. It's not going to affect the states. We've never tampered with local government funds so it's going to continue. Um, what the local governments have to do is to manage themselves, especially with the upcoming um, minimum wage, to manage their affairs and make sure um, salaries are paid, uh, traditional rulers get their 5%, and those are the main issues. In other news, federal government has inaugurated a presidential food systems coordination unit to control food prices and ensure policies on food security are effectively implemented. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who inaugurated the coordination unit, says state governments and development partners are part of the process. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila has the story. Food insecurity, a major challenge that needs urgent attention. So this meeting provides opportunity to re-engineer and reposition the nation on a sound footing to tackle this challenge head on. Outlining the mandate of the committee, Vice President Kashim Shatima said, the urgency and seriousness of the matter at hand requires the ideas and resources of all stakeholders. This committee seeks to coordinate all the agricultural activ activities uh, beyond also agricultural, but, uh, but anything to do with food system between the local government, states and the federal government. And it's a coordinating unit that reports also, like I said, to the Presidential Economic Coordinating Council. The government made reference to the Green Imperative Program, a government-catalyzed, private sector-driven agricultural industrialization program, as one initiative which the committee must work assiduously to activate and operationalize. This committee will look into the possibility of investing in commercial agriculture, ensuring that private partnership-driven our program is established with a view to producing food commodity in huge quantity. All the value chains, the private sector, governance, the political will and everything was in this room today. And I believe that we've taken a charge. And the charge is to change the life of Nigerians and deliver. Nigeria will not only be self-sufficient in food security, but it will also export. The smallholder farmer will be able to assist, be assisted and also a mechanization issue will come up, irrigation will come up. These are the major things we need to boost agriculture in this country. But with all this that we have deliberated inside, soon and very soon Nigeria will be a better place where we have food for people and Nigeria will be better. Other stakeholders at the meeting pledged their commitment to the success of all the efforts by the federal government aimed at addressing food insecurity in the country. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila. NTA News. The federal government is supporting smallholder farmers who lost their ginger plantations as a result of ginger blight outbreak, which also affected Nigeria's foreign earnings from exports of the cash crop. Musa Babaliu has more on that story. This is what ginger plants look like. It is a root crop with high economic value. Nigeria is Africa's largest producer of the crop and the world's second largest. However, the production of the cash crop dropped drastically in 2023 due to the outbreak of ginger blight. This development has brought about a major challenge to the social and economic well-being of ginger farmers, mostly in Kaduna State. A farmer in Zankua, Kaduna State, told me he lost ginger worth 25 million naira in 2023 to the disease. Some went to the bank, some went to individual, because they believe at the end of it they are going to do a bumper harvest. But very unfortunate, this uh, uh, disease or fungi disease came on board and he hindered uh, the, the production of uh, ginger. To this end, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Awakar Kari, received the approval of the President for intervention. The National Agricultural Development Fund is therefore mandated to identify genuine farmers, train them on good agronomic practices, and encourage them to plant alternative crops. The aim is to support the smallholder farmers to plant alternative crops, as their farmlands are not suitable for ginger cultivation for now. They are being supported with fertilizer, improved seeds, and chemicals. 
uh, we basically concentrated on those that own the smallest uh, hectare in terms of farmlands and we've done this in uh, three local governments uh, that covered uh, at least all the seven local governments that were affected. 5,000 farmers with 0 0.5 to 1 hectares have been supported. We now use this fertilizer to produce an alternative crop that will give them the opportunity to begin to secure ginger seeds whenever the disease is over. Urea that we are now receiving here is 35,000 in the market, which of course the government alleviated from this very suffering that give, they are giving us this fertilizer. I'm very grateful. Even though Nigeria ginger output this year will remain the same, the intervention by the National Agricultural Development Fund is expected to significantly increase maize and sorghum production in the country. From Kafanchan Kaduna State, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Now, an unfortunate situation occurred early hours of Friday when a two-story building in Busabuji just collapsed with students undergoing normal academic activities. Ijoma Ozomina reports that no fewer than 22 lives were lost so far in the incident. It was a Black Friday for just residents as they witnessed the collapse of a two-story school building of Saints Academy Primary and Secondary School Busabuji, which was constructed in 2009. According to an eyewitness, a loud bank preceded the collapse of the building, which had students writing the NECO and the promotion exams. Standing in front of the building, just watching them passing, ah, suddenly we had a noise with one kind of dust. When we rushed to this place, that was when we started seeing some students trying to force themselves out, out with the pillars holding some of them. Rescue operations from the military, police, SEMA, NEMA and Red Cross, as well as residents of JAWS, were handy to take the casualties to the nearest medical facility. We quickly mobilized our volunteers and other collaborating agencies coming here to start doing such and rescue, in which we were able to start rescuing and we rescue many. The remaining buildings posting threat to the environment. So there was a super superior directive that everything should be brought down to avert more disasters. Plateau State Commissioner for Information, Musa Asham says, thorough investigation will be carried out to determine the cause of the building collapse. About um, 90 or so have been evacuated to the hospital. Hospitals, um, we have um, about um, 77 that are in different um, state, that have different degrees of injury. Meanwhile, investigations is on to ascertain the number of casualties. In Jos, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. We now join our correspondent, Caleb Gochin, who visited the Plato Specialist Hospital where the victims were evacuated to for an update. Hello, Caleb. I mean, thank you very much. It's not a good day for us on the plateau. Uh, just like we said earlier on, it's really a, a very, very sad day where uh, many students, uh, you know, came under this challenge. We've lost some, but thank God many were rescued. So most of them were brought in here to the Plateau State Specialist Hospital, uh, but we learn many of them have been treated and discharged. We lost a few. But the chief medical director, uh, Professor Christopher Bigua, who will tell us exactly what is happening right at this moment. So, uh, Prof, thank you very much for being with us. Thank and I very know very it's not been a uh, really normal day for you. But just tell us what is. Okay, thank you very much, Caleb. Um, like you rightly pointed out, this was a very bad day for us. We received about 40 students, uh, three of them with uh, spinal cord injury, uh, three were brought in dead, and about 10 of them critically ill, some with multiple fractures, and they are right now on admission. Uh, most of them had minor injuries, some of them bruises, and were able to treat them and also to send them home to come back. Uh, for review. 
uh, some heart pains with non-specific uh, injuries. Uh, the heart radiological investigations done and we are also monitoring. Uh, as you can see, the casualty here now is virtually quiet, uh, but in the morning and afternoon hours it was a madhouse. Uh, but thankfully, um, the government was able to respond swiftly with some commodities. Uh, the patients who were seen here were treated without charging them anything and we're hoping to continue to do same for those who are on admission. So actually that's what uh, the situation is quite, it's very pathetic. Uh, but we thank God that the number of deaths are very few. And this underscore the need for builders and those buildings to get the proper permits and also to follow the let down procedures for buildings so that we can avert feature occurrences like this. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, the police has just, uh, you know, given a statement stating that 22, unfortunately, 22 lives were lost. But uh, as we said, several students were involved. So, but uh, gratefully to many uh, home re reunited with their families. And we pray this does not occur again. That's it from Jaws. Lamy, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Caleb, for that live update on the collapsed building in Busabuji, just uh, Plata State. Now, enhancing efficiency through operational optimization is a priority for the Nigerian Air Force. But a report by the Stephen Oronsoy-led committee takes a different approach by proposing drastic cost-cutting measures. The proposed act falls on the Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology effort, a move which key players won could result in the loss of billions of Naira and erase a vital part of the nation's heritage and technology-driven future. Now, defense correspondent Naja Atutijani delves into the controversy surrounding the recommendations made in that report. Housing airplanes from Nigeria's wartime era, a part of the nation's history and heritage closely linked to what happens at the Air Force Institute of Technology. The operation of the Nigerian Air Force cannot be said to be effective without a personnel that can maintain the platform of the service. There is a strong relationship of dependence of the Nigerian Air Force on the Air Force Institute of Technology for providing basic manpower training to support its operation. Not only does it train personnel to man machines, it is also a training ground for innovative minds. But its mandate is being threatened by the Orosanye report, which seeks to merge AFIT, a hybrid institution, with the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, a tactical military one. There is need for clarification, and then government need to understand that the core mandate of NDA is to train officer cadets. Meet Bright, a final year A student of aerospace engineering at AFIT. The 22-year-old's innovative idea is set to change the trajectory of rocket science in the country. Now, currently, for my final year project, I'm working on analysis of a reusable rocket engine. Right? Now, the trend in, in spacecraft is making sure that we bring down the cost of space exploration. Bright and some of his course mates, however, worry that civilians may not be allowed to continue this trend if there is a merger. Even from the time where I came here, 2019 till now, the progress has been immeasurable. And I just worry that if this merger comes through, this, the, project, the progress it has made so far might be retarded. Key players say their fear is valid. Remember that this report was submitted 2014. AFIT uh, Act was uh, enacted 2017 and AFIT came into being 2018. So one begins to wonder. For Bright, if innovative ideas such as his and his counterparts are allowed to be nurtured in line with AFIT's mandate, the vision of a jet set technological future saving the country billions of Naira will quickly replace the current air platforms for the nation's safety. Najaatu Tajani. NTA News.
You're watching the network news on NCA and up ahead, official installation of 43rd Olubadon of Ibadan land. Thank you for saying we continue the news with security related stories as the defense headquarters says it is aware of plans by some terrorists to target some critical public infrastructure across the country and troops are on red alert to avert the plot. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the director of defense media operations, Major General Edward Buba, stated this at the bi-weekly news conference in Abuja. Security agencies responsible for securing critical infrastructure and protecting some of the known facilities have been notified and have been placed on alert. We have frustrated several of such dastardly plans and we are actively closing in on the perpetrators. The defense headquarters is also concerned about activities of some persons who serve as informants and suppliers to terrorists and bandits. Supported by informants that report on troops' movement, they also receive logistic support. All these add to the complexities of our ongoing operation. Winning the war without the support of the people is close to impossible. The Defense Headquarters notes that military operations have been heightened across the country and assure citizens of victory against the common enemy. Meanwhile, many Nigerians have encountered instances of a hoodlum pointing a gun at them to rob them of their valuables and other times stories are facing the media about communal clashes or kidnappings where criminals use dangerous weapons to hurt others. This common scenario reflects the prevalence of illicit arms in circulation. And Najah Azitijani puts this crucial security matter into perspective. Over to you, Najah Thank you, Lami. Welcome to this segment where we present key statistics concerning arms proliferation across Nigeria. Now, small arms in the country, experts say, are fueling violent crimes in certain hotspots in the nation. In 2023 alone, an estimated 6.1 million of these weapons were said to be in possession of these non-state actors. Now, the, in collaborating with customs to ensure strict border control and patrol, along with other security agencies, the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons was able to recover some of these weapons that are in the hands of non-state act, um, non actors rather. From January um, 2024 to July 2024, rifles intercepted by customs numbered 844. Uh, bullets, that's ammunition, intercepted by customs as of July 2024, numbered 112,500 while knockdown parts of tomahawk shotguns intercepted as of July 3, 2024, number 55, while firearms recovered by the Nigerian military, uh, um, number an estimated 5,900. And when you look at some of the activities of the Nigerian military, you'll find also that rounds of ammunition recovered by the military in the period under review, that's January to June 2024, number 128,122. While pump action cartridges, also another kind of ammunition recovered by the DSS, number 21,000 and pump uh, ammunition recovered by the DSS and pump action rifles 440 and as well as 228,741. Firearms recovered in the last one year total 385. Now the military is also playing an active role together with customs to ensure that um, there is that as much as possible those containers coming into the country are checked for these weapons and as i mentioned earlier customs officials intercepted 844 rifles and 112,500 bullets which were secretly stored in some of these containers that were intercepted by the customs officials 
Now, um, of course, we've already talked about the Nigerian military recovering 5,900 firearms. And um, bottom line is that the Nigerian military is working with other security agencies to ensure strict border patrol and also while to counter violent extremism and intercept some of these weapons. And it's back to you, Lamy. Thanks for, the, for joining this segment. The statistics are quite scary, but I believe um, our security agencies are up and doing that. They are going to curb that menace in our society. Now, persons with disabilities, women and children are said to be mostly affected by the consequences of conflicts and crisis. To change this narrative, the Martin Luther Aguai International Leadership and Peacekeeping Center in partnership with the government of Japan and the UNDP is developing the capacity of security personnel with the requisite knowledge in the protection of civilians in armed conflicts. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has the details. Conflicts continue to affect the innocent and people living with disability, so the need for training focusing on potential peacekeepers for multidimensional challenges and peace support operations. These are participants of the Comprehensive Protection of Civilians Course 37 2024 at the Nigerian Army Resource Center Abuja and have successfully completed their study. This is a milestone in the quest to ensure that civilians are protected in crisis zones across the globe. I'm confident that you apply the knowledge acquired during this course to make a positive impact in your respective services, ministries, departments, and agencies. The scope of the training covers humanitarian principles, causes and nature of conflicts in Africa, United Nations legal policy frameworks on protection of civilians, and tactical decision-making process. The skills and knowledge um, that you have gained in this course will be essential as you work to protect civilians in your respective postings. Remember, that your role is crucial in upholding the principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, and dignity, even in the face of adversity. The two weeks intensive course is in partnership with UNDP, Government of Nigeria and Japan. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Eastern European nation of Belarus has a fair reputation as an industrialized country with special interest in the exports of heavy farm implements and agricultural products. Now, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko says his country is eager to partner Nigeria in these areas. He was speaking when he met with Nigeria's First Lady, Ulure Mitunubu, in Belarus. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo reports. Highlighting agriculture, food processing, industry and education are some of the key areas of cooperation between the two countries. President Lukashenko says his country is aware of several possibilities in Africa's largest economy and willing to commit its resources and expertise to harnessing them for mutual benefits. In anticipation of further collaborations, he says it is the desire of his government to have Belarusian Foreign Affairs Minister visit Nigeria. While appreciating President Lukashenko for granting 20 Nigerian students full scholarship through a pet project, Renewed Hope Initiative, Nigeria's First Lady Ulure Mitunumbu told our host that the RHI is widening the scope of women participation in agriculture by empowering them through the Women Agricultural Support Program. Earlier, the First Lady met with the Belarusian Minister of Education, Andre even it, who pointed out that there is currently a Nigerian student population of about 600 in the country, with many of them doing very well academically. He also informed the First Lady that the Belarusian government hopes to establish specialist training centers in Nigeria. During the First Lady's visit, she also met with the Speaker of Belarusian Parliament, Natalia Kuchanova, and members of the Women's Union of Belarus. Adeni Itaiwo. News. Oba Akinloye Olapi Olakulei Ige Olakulei the first has been crowned the 43rd Olubadon of Ibadan land. The official installation of the paramount ruler was held as the ancient Mapo Hall in Ibadan. Ayomiku Ajibola has the story. 
with dignitaries from across the country, including President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Minister of Power, Bayo Hadelabu, Sultan of Sokoto, among others, witnessing the installation of Ulubado of Ubadaland. Governor Shiyima Akine presented staff of office to Oba Akinoye Owolabi Olakulei Ige Olakulei the first. President Bola Tinubu and our state governor Shiyima Akine urged traditional rulers in the Pesetan state and across the country to remain custodian of culture and traditions of the land. I congratulate myself. I'm proud to be a true son of the battle. I hand over staff of office to the what we call the ruler of the battle land. As the case demonstrated that the battleground has a whole lot of other because we are still here. We don't have a new era and has from time immemorial been the reality of measuring the stability of our traditional institution. 89 years old, Oba Olabi Olakulei from the Okubaja family in Itabale area of Ibada has stood at the throne to succeed the 42nd Olubado of Ubada land, Obama Wood Olale Kambalogun, whose reigns lasted for two years in Ibado, Ayomiku, Ajibola, NTA News. In the meantime, President Bola Tinubu extends his warm congratulations to Oba Owolabi Olakulei on his coronation as the 43rd Olubadon of the ancient city of Ibadan. President Tinubu joins the family of the new Olubadon Ibadan citizens, the Oyo State Council of Obas and the Oyo State Government to celebrate Oba Olakulei on his accession to the revered throne of his forebears, affirming that he brings to the seat immense wisdom and experience, and urges the monarch to use the highly esteemed tool of Ibadan to advance the peace, security, and developments of the area. The president assures the new Ulubado of his support and wishes him success as he works to promote and preserve the culture and traditions of the people while congratulating Ibadan indigents on the peaceful succession process. And President Bola Tinubu felicitates with Professor Wole Shuinka as he celebrates his 90th birthday Saturday, 13th July 2024, in a statement. President Tinubu says Professor Shuinka, the first African to win the Nobel Literature Prize in 1986, deserves all the accolades the president, which the light announces the decision of the federal government to rename the National Theatre in Igomu Surulere as the Wole Shuinka Center for Culture and the Creative Arts. The statement goes further to extol the virtues of Professor Shuinka his struggles for the enthronement of democracy in Nigeria, unwavering dedication to the values of human dignity and justice, as well as his remarkable literary achievements locally and internationally. He urges him to continue to inspire citizens to build a nation where people are free from oppression and can live up to their dreams. We go to the legislature where the Senate Committee on Health has assured health institutions of needed support for efficient service delivery in hospitals across the country. This was during the committee's visit to the Federal Teaching Hospital, Gombe. Zahra Umar Adamu has the report. The Senate Committee on Health, led by its chairman, Ipalibo Paniguhari, inspects some facilities where management of the teaching hospital identifies inadequate manpower, training and retraining, power supply, among other issues, bedeviling the health institution that require urgent attention. The committee appreciates facilities on ground and the cordial working relationship existing in the hospital. We are going to do everything we can do as Senate, as National Assembly, to mitigate this uh, problem that will ground our health services across the country. It's not just here in Federal Teaching Hospital. And then in the, on the issue of manpower, we, uh, we know that there is a, a deliberate uh, uh, effort now to increase the number of medical students being admitted to our uh, medical schools. Teaching. And I have seen passion in them that they are definitely going to do something about it. So very soon we are going to expect a lot of changes that will better the life of Nigerians in terms of the healthcare delivery. The Federal Medical Center, Gombe, was upgraded to a teaching hospital on 1st January 
2014 Zara Umar Adam NTA News Still on health matters parents whose children and wards are administered the five doses of vaccines against the child killer diseases in Kabi states are now to receive a bonus of 5000 naira in addition to the 1000 naira received per dose this is government's and stakeholders' strategy to reduce morbidity and mortality rates among children in the state. Governor Nasser Idris, represented by his deputy, flagged off the new incentive program in Argongu through a conditional cash transfer to mothers to encourage acceptance of the vaccines. Abdul Jalil Mohammed Bawa reports. Morbidity and mortality rate was very high in Kebi State because many refused to be immunized and will not allow their children or wards to be immunized. Eventually, to cop the trend, since starvation and introduction of incentives such as 1,000 Naira per vaccine was introduced, these worked like magic as more parents began to accept the vaccines. However, in three local government areas of the state, for example, still has a ratio of 25% children who have never been immunized. These cause stakeholders to set up the game as it now offers the sum of 5,000 Naira to any parent who completes the five doses of the immunization. This is in addition to 1,000 Naira already received for vaccine. Before, I used to trick to come to the hospital, but with this incentive, I come to the hospital with ease. May God bless the new incentive. Though the exercise has recorded 70% of its target for zero-dose reduction over the years, reaching 85% coverage in 2023, the new incentive is expected to achieve greater results. <laughs> I'm reiterating my call that this vaccine is very important, so parents should bring their children for it. The additional 5,000 Naira grant to mothers will also be extended to other local government areas in the state. In Argungu of Kebi State, Abdul Mohammed Bawa, NTA News. We go for a break. More stories when we return. Do stay tuned. Thank you for saying business news is next with Benny Adams. It's over to you, Benny. Thank you, Lamy. And now talking business. The Minister of Environment, Abbas Lawal, has approached the Nigerian Exchange for Sustainability Instrument, which includes green bonds and equities. This is following the unveiling of Impact Board, a platform for listing sustainability instruments. idea of sustainable financing, uh, grain bonds, uh, I think for us is both uh, coming to the product, which is one of the things we're discussing today, but also making sure that we have the right frameworks, the right sorts of partnerships to draw in capital, to pull in capital, to stimulate that market. We need this fund. There's no way the government can give us all the funds that we require to do that. Every year we issue this uh, bond. We want to revive this market so that we can get more and uh, more of retail investors that can be able to invest through this platform from the comfort of their homes. And I was still talking about market. Investors gain 172.88 billion naira as the all share index appreciated by 0.20%. To close at 99,671.28 basis points. A total of 420.8 million shares in 7,617 deals, corresponding to a market value of 6.82 billion, were traded. Today's data shows 42% improvement in volume, 25% improvement in turnover, and 7% improvement in deals. The current market capitalization is 56.4 trillion naira. On the aggregate, 117 listed equities participated in trading, ending with 21 gainers and 23 losers. Fidelity Bank recorded the highest volume of traded shares, followed by uh, Ella Lakes and Guarantee Trust Holdings with 42.7 million shares. That is Business News. Thank you, Benny. 
to train and sharpen professional skills of NTA's workforce, the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development and Center for Leadership and Training Center are offering their expertise to promote professionalism beyond broadcasting. Elizabeth Omori reports that the NTA boss, Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembus, represented by Executive Director Administration and Training, assured the organizations of unflinching support. Sociologists believe provides opportunity to strengthen existing skills and learn new ones to enhance individual or organizational performance. And the NTA is committed to this to meet up with global trends in broadcasting. For this reason, the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, which has been in existence for 35 years, is soliciting the support of the NTA to drive its mandate and offer trainings to build a workforce with positive attitude for organizational development. We have our training calendars every year. It needs to be turned out. We want you to patronize as many because I'm sure most of the topics will uh, benefit your staff. On your upcoming annual trainers uh, conference, uh, in whatever area we can assist you to ensure that it comes up um, and run smoothly, uh, you can count on our support in that regard. In another meeting, the Citizens and Leadership Training Center also sought the collaboration of the NCH project, its activities, focusing on molding individuals to become responsible citizens. Assist Citizenship and Leadership Training Center, you know, to be more known out there and so that our, our mandate is better known to the members of the public and what we are trying to achieve through the National Assembly, you know, have the support of Nigerians. Your goals and objectives are similar to those of the Nigerian Television Authority. And you can consider the NTA as a platform that you can use in projecting some of these, uh, you know, values. Reorientation of the youth, cultural volunteerism for national development, patriotism and ethics were part of issues raised. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. Now, public relations has been identified as a tool for projecting a nation's image and interest, which in turn fosters international relations and diplomacy anchored on mutual benefits. Omenka Marachuku reports that stakeholders at the second Nigerian Institute of Public Relations Special Diamond Anniversary Induction for Media and Allied Practitioners in Abuja in, are uh, in consensus with this. Our mission, mission into the membership, into the membership of, the of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. That oath by the new inductees was the peak of activities marking the second NIPR Diamond Anniversary induction for media and allied practitioners with the charge to uphold the ethics and standard of the profession. So we are going to use our office to promote uh, positive news. But I'm happy to be in the space where the skills that we have learned over the last couple of days will be brought to bear as we discharge our assignment. Wherever I find myself, I will be a brand ambassador of this great country. Stakeholders say the addition of 540 inductees into the profession is an indication that public relation is getting better in the best interest of the country. Let us speak from the point of view of patriotism or believing in the nation. As young people come into journalism, stand by the truth. Your graduation today is not an end to learning or the beginning of new studies. So you should be proud of who you are. All right? On the basis of that, I hereby confer on all of you the membership of Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. This is the second batch of inductees into the profession as part of Institute's Golden Jubilee anniversary. In Abuja, Minka Marajuku, NTA News. We take another break. Sports, when we return. Thank you for staying tuned. We now take global updates. H.O. reveals that a recent escalation in violence in the east of the country between Congolese forces and the M23 has forced more people 
to flee their homes. They described the situation as catastrophic, with lack of water and sanitation systems, resulting in outbreaks of diseases, including cholera, measles, and mpox. With over 25 million people affected, the WHO said the DRC has the world's highest number of people in need of humanitarian aid. The UN agency called for immediate action and sustained unimpeded access to address basic needs, urging the parties to work together to restore peace. In other news, at least 63 persons have been confirmed missing in Nepal after a landslide triggered by heavy rains swept two buses off a highway and plunged them into a river. Reports say only three persons were confirmed to have escaped while rescue operation is ongoing. Meanwhile, activists gathered to protest against the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, and the Alliance military bases in Greece's Thessaloniki, demanding an immediate end to conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza and the closure of U.S. NATO bases in Greece. Reports said discussions at NATO's 75th anniversary in Washington, D.C. were laden with promises of future conflict with Russia. Francis Udojo, NT News. And that's all we have time for on Network News tonight. We thank you for watching. I'm Lami Ali. Do have a good weekend. Uh, 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 uh,